dear students uh, good morning to all of you today we are going to discuss the law of variable proportions or law of diminishing return in crop production this is very very important law and usually uh, it is found operational in agriculture whenever we produce our animals our crops or whatsoever enterprise is there on the farm we use variety of resources uh, to produce it whatsoever it is and these materials which are required to produce a particular product on farm or elsewhere will need would need certain resources certain materials or certain inputs that are converted into output which is also called as production so this law is oper operational in all kind of production including industry also so very very important law and you will study this law in two part today is first part and tomorrow will be the second part so as a general uh, as a general man or general public what do you understand by law of variable proportion or diminishing return in crop production anybody can give comment what is law of diminishing return everybody must be knowing about it yeah any any student can come and tell me what is law of diminishing return what does it mean or law of variable proportion how they are different Sir, are these... uh, in case of production economics uh, when uh, we uh, apply any any input in the field uh, then the then the yield of the crop will increase and after some time it will constant and then it will decrease if we constantly increase the input this is law of diminishing return and in case of law of variable proportion uh, uh, all the other factors will be constant and uh, and the one input will be variable and that input will decide the yield or output okay thank you very much i i think you defined the law of diminishing return very well and however here i want to make a point that these two law are same almost same hardly any difference is there in these two law tomorrow i will discuss why they are same and why they are not different so for the time being you can remember that these two laws are same so just today we will learn the uh, first, uh, we want some background of the law of diminishing return. So this lecture is giving you some background, some terminology, and some uh, some aspects which are related to law of diminishing return. So first, we will see that what are different types of resources that are used in the production process. And then we will describe the production. What is production? What are different production functions? Production functions are the relationship between input and output. And, and this will vary depending upon the nature of the demand and supply kind of things. And it will vary in short run and long run. The relationship of different production functions will vary in short run and long run. So today you will see that what is short run and what is long run. In economics, you will usually find that they speak of two words. These are short run and long run time periods. Fixed and variable factors in production. And then we will detail the concepts of productivity measure. How the productivity can be measured and what are different criteria, what are different terms that describe the productivity. And we will see uh, the partial and total factor productivities. So these are the contents for today's lecture. And before I actually start, I just want to get some idea from you that what is long run and what is short run? Can anybody tell me what is short run and what is long run? Time period. Say short run, in short run, one factor of production is uh, changing and others are remain constant. In long run, all the factor of production are variable. Very good, excellent. So actually there are two kind of uh, inputs. One is uh, variable input and other is fixed input. So she says that in short run, it is only the variable input that varies. However, in long run, both can vary. Both can be changed. Very good. Similarly, there are two variables. One is fixed variable. Other is, uh, say, uh, or you can say uh, fixed cost and variable cost, you can say. 
So what is fixed cost and what is variable cost? Fixed cost and variable cost because the variable uh, which which employ uh, uh, which are kind of fixed kind or long term kind of variable, their cost is fixed cost. Yes. Or input which changes uh, with the production are variable factors or variable inputs. So actually, these factors are inputs. So anybody uh, can tell me the difference in fixed and variable cost. Sir, fixed fixed cost is not change with the amount of production, and the variable cost is change with the amount of production. Exactly, exactly. Very nice. And can anybody tell me difference in AP, TP, and MP? This is just to generate some interest in you so that you can learn it more effectively. I'm not testing your knowledge. It is just to generate some interest in you so that you are attached to the topic. AP, TP, MP. Okay, what is productivity? Productivity. Means output per unit of input. Output per unit of input means output divided by input is your productivity. But it can be measured in different sense and, and uh, different uh, uh, say ways, like average product, total product, and marginal product. OK, we will learn all these. So these are the objectives in brief. Agri-business. Agriculture operated by business. When you employ the principles of business in agriculture, it becomes agri-business and involving all activities in the business of agricultural production. Agricultural productivity. So this productivity may include all kinds of enterprises. Here, agriculture doesn't mean just crop production. So a measure of the economic productivity of a given quantity of agricultural land typically expressed as the ratio of agricultural output to agricultural inputs. Direct costs. Costs which are variable and fixed that are readily allocated to an enterprise. There are direct costs and some indirect costs are also there. Enterprise, an in uh, in, uh, identifiable sector of the farm or horticultural business for which output includes valuables of unsold stocks produced by the enterprises. Now, fixed costs. Costs which do not vary. Somebody was saying uh, this definition. Costs which do not vary with the small changes in the scale of the individual enterprise. For example, machinery, building, or roads uh, are your fixed costs. Inputs, these are actually resources or materials used in the production process. So you can easily define what is an input. These are the resources or materials used in production process. Even when you write your thesis, you write materials and methods. So those, those materials are inputs. So it may be feed, materials, labor, machinery, measured in physical or financial terms. Produce is the product. A variety of farm produce food crops, including fruits, vegetables, and sometimes also grains and other products. Production function, a quantitative, Quantitative here means mathematical. Quantitative perception of the relationship between the input and output. The inputs are the various factors of production. Factors of production are land, labor, capital, and enterprise. This enterprise is sometimes also called as organization. It is also called as management. It is also called as entrepreneur. Entrepreneur who is doing it. Management manager or organization. So this enterprise is also known by different name. And fifth uh, fifth input or factor of production is technology. In some places it is mentioned as a factor of production. In some places it is not. But definitely technology is also a factor of production. Knowledge or technology. So there can be five factors of production: land, labor, capital, management, and your technology. Now, total factor productivity, this I will discuss in detail today. A measure of agricultural productivity that takes into account all of the land, labor, capital, and materials resources 
utilized in farm production and compares them with the total amount of crop and livestock output. So total factor productivity here means the output divided by value of all the inputs from A to Z, whatever inputs are used, they are uh, as a part of a denominator. The numerator is the output. A variable cost, cost which vary in approximately direct proportion to the scale of enterprises like fertilizer, pesticide, seeds. Now we come to the main subject that is your resources. What is resource? So resources are naturally used for production of a product and they are called as factors of production. Every student in this class should remember what are different factors of production or variables in production. These are also called as inputs. What are inputs? Use of the services of land, labor, capital, and management in production. Output is the commodity produced by the inputs or inputs when inputs are trans transformed, they result in output. Now we discussed in brief about different factors of production. These are inputs or resources. So first is land. Many times students consider land as, a, as just soil, but in economics, it has very wide meaning. So it is not just related to the earth's crust or which is called as soil. So it also includes variety of minerals which are given to us by nature, forest, even groundwater, etc. It also includes certain renewable resources like forest. They are natural resources. Non-renewable resources are also there like minerals or petroleums. An example of key land input in farming activities is productive topsoil. So whatever natural resources are seen by us, they are part of land in economics. So even your light, light wildlife, they are also kind of land, sunlight. Now labor, you understand the, which, uh, which do the work actually. So all labor services used in production with the exception of management activities. The human labor in management is not counted here in labor for which you have a separate factor that is your uh, management. In crop production, labor activities may include like your seed, bed preparation, tillage, planting, irrigation, chemical or fertilizer application, harvesting, etc. So those jobs or work are performed by labor. Now capital. Capital means how rich you are. Different meanings in different concepts, uh, contexts in production. Manufactured goods like fuel, chemicals, tractors, truck, and buildings. So these are the resources available with the farm and that provide productive services to the users. So capital and capital can capital items can be purchased through money. Capital items can be purchased through, of course, labor is also purchased through money. Capital goods do not provide consumer satisfaction directly. They, they are involved in the process of production, but they don't, uh, consumer is not bothered about it, that which tractor was uh, uh, used in the production, what kind of seed were used, what kind of uh, fertilizers were used. Consumer is not interested in those capital items. So capital goods do not provide consumer direct satisfaction or satisfaction directly. So there can be two kinds of capital items. To be more clear or to have more clarity, what is capital? So here, there are two categories of capital items. One is non-durable capital input. The inputs which are part of can, uh, capital are consumable in nature. They are immediately used during the process of production, such as fuel used in tractor or engines, and chemicals are entirely used up during the current production. For example, farmers use, uses, use, uh, uses tractor, he would need fuel. So fuel is, is kind of capital and it is consumable. It will be immediately used. Second is durable capital items or inputs such as machinery, tractor itself, and buildings are utilized over a period of years. So these are the resources available with the farmer at farm and most of them are purchased by using money. So sometimes they are also called as capital goods. 
So fourth one is your management organization or entrepreneur. Entrepreneur. So of course, the decision making is in the part of management, the farmer or the producer or the grower. It functions, its functions are varied and the easier to conceptualize than to measure. So what decisions are made by farmers or producers? They are part of management. It gets the profit and it also bears the risk. It also bears the losses. So what decisions are taken by farmer, manager, how, when, and what to produce? How best to organize inputs, the combination of inputs, when and how to market the output? What should be the level of production? How to arrange finance? How to expand the production? So main job of management or organization is to, is to arrange the inputs and arrange the uh, purchase of the inputs or what should be the best combination of inputs? What proportion of different inputs should be used in a, in a production process? That is also a decision-making process on the part of the producer or farmer or manager. Similarly, he will get output. So what quantity of output would be better that can give him better returns? How much and when I should produce it? So th these are and how to sell it, when to sell it, so that he can earn uh, profits. So these are uh, basic uh, duties or functions of a manager. And here comes the law of diminishing return because you want best combination of inputs, best combination of inputs so that you get maximum revenue, maximum revenue or maximum profit out of production. Now we go to the production. Hope you, you understand the basics about the factors of production, land, labor, capital management, and technology I did not discuss here. Any question related to uh, resources or inputs or factors of production? Yeah, Astika, you want to ask any question? No, sir. Okay. So now we go to the production. In my first class, uh, we discussed about the production. What is production? What is crop? What are different principles of crop production? So for, for us now, it is easy to understand what is production. So simply transformation or conversion of inputs into output. A firm buys inputs, productive resources. These are the productive resources, inputs, and outputs are what it sells. So you understand input and output. Output is the result of inputs. It is not the creation of the matter, but creation of value actually. In economics, it is creation of value. Producing goods which satisfy some human want. Uh, the other definition is technical processes requiring the mental, physical skill of craftsmen and consist of changing the shape size and properties of materials and converting them into useful articles. This is a typical definition of production, which covers every aspect of production. Now, after production, now you have seen that production is possible only through the input and production is your output actually. Production is your output. So there must be some functional relationship between input and output, which is called as production function a functional relationship between quantity of inputs and output is your production function. It shows how and to what extent output changes with variations in input. If you change one input by other, if you increase or decrease the input, how the changes will happen or how much changes will happen in the output is uh, related by production functions for a specified period of time. So this, these production functions are actually equations or those equations can be uh, written in, a, in the table. In the graph form, you can represent those uh, equations or in equation form as such, showing the amount of output obtained from various combination of inputs used in production. So normally when we define law of uh, diminishing return or law of uh, variable proportions, we keep most of the inputs fixed and only vary one input. Then, then we, we take out the productivity and other economics of the uh, 
that particular variable or input. Now the production functions, uh, just you can see what are different components of production function. Algebraically, it may be expressed as an equation. For example, Q, Q is, is equal to F, F is your function, means multiplica multiplication of L. L, L is your labor, M is your management or organization, N is your natural resources and K is, K is normally represented by capital and T is given technology. So therefore you can see five factors of production are there. So output is the result of interaction of all these five factors. So this is a kind of production function. And variety of equations are used. Variety of equations are used like linear equation, quadratic equations, and Pope Douglas, and there are so many equations, and those are also called as models. So many models describe the relationship of input and output, and those relationships are production functions. Now, switch over to the short and long run. The functional relationship between the change in output due to the change in input is studied in two phases. In the beginning, we have seen short run and long run. So short run is a period in which output can be changed. The product or production can be changed by changing only variable factor. Variable factor. In the short run, fixed inputs like plant. Plant here doesn't mean your, your crop plant. Plant is your industrial plant here in the sense. Plant, machinery, building cannot be changed. They cannot be changed. So they, they are fixed fixed factors or variable factors. So production can be raised by increasing only the variable factors in short run, but till the extent of capacity of fixed factor. Fixed factor means there is limit also. You cannot go uh, increasing the variable factors uh, unconditionally or continuously. There will be some point where you need to stop the uh, the variable factor because the fixed factor has some capacity. For example, if a hectare of one hectare of uh, rice crop can be harvested by 35 labors in a day, 35 labors in a day, then you need not to increase to make it 45 or 50. Means you, you need not to make overuse of these variable factors. So every fixed factor can allocate or can adjust or can adapt a certain value of variable factors. Control it, can be here, or uh, whatever words you use, long run. A period that is long enough for the firm to adjust all its in inputs, whether fixed factors or variable factors, both can be adjusted, can be increased or decreased in long run, according to change in the conditions, depending upon the demand. In the long run, firm can change its, its factory, the size of the factory, switch to new techniques or technology of production, purchase new machinery, etc. So this is this happens in long run, where all factors are variable factors. Whether it is fixed factor or variable factor, all factors become variable factor in long run. Because you can make changes in them. You can vary them. Variable means the factor which can vary, or fixed factor, factor which will not vary, is fixed factor. You cannot change it. But in long run, you can change both fixed and variable factor. Therefore, all are variable factors in long run. Now, just see some difference in short and long run. The distinction between short run and long run does not refer to calendar period and not based on a fixed time span. It will vary with the kind of business, kind of uh, kind of activities or kind of subject that is under operation. So it depends on the production conditions and varies from farm to farm. For one particular farm, five years may be a, a, a short run. Five years may be short run and 10 years may be long run. Similarly, you, you can change this. You can change this for other farms. Say 10 years may be short run, 20 years may be long term or long run. So it depends on production conditions and varies from farm to farm or industry to industry. 
For example, 10 years may be short run period for a steel industry, while a period of one year may be a long run period for a wheat producer, because it takes one year uh, uh, rotation. Now see the differences in tabular form in short run, long run. Here you will have more clarity. So first see the meaning, first row. Output can be changed by changing only variable factors. Output can be changed by changing all factors of production, fixed and variable factors. Classification, factors classified as variable and fixed factor. So in short run, both the factors are applicable variable as well as fixed factor. But here in long run, as somebody was saying, all factors are variable in the long run. Now price determination, how price determination happens? So here in short run, demand is more active in price determination. As supply cannot be increased, supply is almost fixed immediately with increase in demand. Here in long run, one can adjust to both demand and supply, they play equal role in price determination. Because if you know that about the future demand, then according to that, you can expand the size of the business or size, size of the activity. Therefore, both can be increased in long run. Now, we go to the variable factors and fixed factor. Just now you have seen short run and long run. Now see variable factors and fixed factors. So variable, variable factors can be changed in short run. Just now you have seen like raw material, casual labor, power, fuel, you can increase or decrease. Fixed factors, these cannot be changed in short run. They can be changed only in long run, plant and machinery, building land, etc. The quantity of fixed factors remains same in the short run. Irrespective of level of output, they do not change whether the level of output rises, falls, or become zero. So fixed factors can be changed only in long run, where they will become variable factors. Now, see the difference in variable factor and fixed factor. Same thing is repeated here, meaning factors that can, no, can be changed in short run are variable factor. Fact, factors that cannot be changed in short run are your fixed factors. Relation with output, they vary directly with the output. They do not vary directly with output, whether you are able to use, make the perfect or complete use of the fixed factor or not, it depends upon you. Example are raw material, casual labor, power, fuel. In fixed factors, you have buildings, plant and machinery, permanent staff, etc. Now we go to the productivity measures. So let us see what is productivity. I hope that now you are clear about short run and long run fixed factors and variable factors. Now we go to productivity measures. So what is productivity? It is an average measure of the efficiency of production. Average measure of the efficiency of production. You can remember this definition. It can be expressed as ratio of output to input. Output divided by input or output per unit of input. Now, Product or output, what is product or output? We should know and what are different measures for measuring the productivity. Product or output refers to the volume of goods produced. How much is produced by a farm or an industry during a specified period of time. And different products and productivity measures are total product, average product, marginal product, elasticity of production, it is also a productivity measure and partial factor productivity, total factor productivity. So these I have listed because they are related to economics and there can be many more uh, measures by which you can measure the productivity. Means you can measure the output input relationship. So total product, total product, total quantity of goods, goods produced by a farm during a given period of time with given number of inputs. That is your total product. For example, 10 labors produce 60 kg of rice, then total product is 60 kg. So this is total product. In short run, a firm can expand total product by increasing only variable factors, as discussed many times. However, in long run, total product can be raised by increasing both fixed and variable factors. 
total product is also known as total physical product TPP, total return or total output. If you have studies uh, law of diminishing return, you must be knowing PP, AP, MP. Now, average product output per unit of variable input. So after uh, after total product, let us see average product as the name suggests that output per unit of variable input obtained when total output is divided by total input. Average product, total product divided by units of variable factor or y upon x. If total product is 60 kg, rice produced by 10 labors, then the average product is 60 by 10. 6 is the average product. TP in terms of AP will be TP is equal to AP into units of variable factor. So it is simple mathematics. You can multiply 6 by 10 and you will get 60. So TP is equal to AP into units of variable factor. So here suppose AP was uh, 6 and units were 10. So 6 into 10, it gives you 60, the total product. Average product is also known as average physical product or average return. This is in terms of physical product, not in financial terms. Now, properties of average product, when the production function is linear, linear means constant change. The, uh, the AP of the input is constant. Average product is constant if function is linear. I will explain it uh, to use in some other class. The AP decreases continuously if the production function represent diminishing return. Diminishing In the diminishing return part, it will decrease continuous, continuously. Or, this average product. When the production function shows increasing return throughout, AP increases continuously. So such questions you get in your fill in the blanks kind of questions. For a production functions which include both increasing and decreasing return, AP will first increase, then reach a maximum and start decreasing. So this is your quadratic functions. Y is equal to A plus BX plus CX square, where in which it increases initially and then decreases. Marginal product. The marginal product is the rate of change in total output as related to changes input. If you make change in input by one unit, then how much is the change in output or that is capital Y or Y? That is your marginal product. So MP is the change in total output divided by change in input. Delta Y upon delta X. X is your input, Y is your output. It refers to addition to total product when one more unit of variable factor is employed. So you can say TPN is equal to TPN minus TPN minus one. And MPN and NF is the number of unit of variable factor, N. So MPN, marginal product of Nth unit of variable factor. TPN is total product of N units of variable factor. And TPN minus 1, total product of N minus 1 units of variable factor. So hope you understand total product, average product, and marginal product. So here, one example is given to you. If 10 laborers make 60 kilograms of rice, means produce 60 kilograms of rice, and 11 laborers make 67 kilograms of rice, the MP of 11th labor will be. So TP11 is equal to TP11 minus TP10. So 67 minus 60 is equal to 7. So this is how you can calculate MP. Marginal product is also known as marginal physical product or marginal return. Or one, one can do that if you take out marginal MP values of all the variables and then make the total of it, it becomes your total product also. So you can see the just the last line. Last line in this slide that uh, TP is equal to summation of MP. Now, marginal product properties, you can see what are different properties. As long as marginal product, delta Y upon delta X is increasing, the TP increasing at an increasing rate. This happens in stage one of law of diminishing return. TP continues to increase when MP decreases, but more than zero. So TP continue to increase when MP is above zero, more than zero. The TP reaches maximum when MP becomes zero and then decreases as the MP becomes negative. 
Afterwards, after zero, MP will become negative and total product will start decreasing after reaching maximum when MP was zero. So you can remember these are very important statements for your quiz examinations. So now you can try to understand input uh, the how these average and marginal product are cal calculated relationship. So input is x, 0, 1, 2, 3, 5. If your input is 0, you will get output 0. It is quite natural. But, but when input is 1, suppose 103, then 2, 174, 3, 2, 23, 4, 2, 57, 2, 81. So these are different output of the input. Uh, this is variable input 1 to 5. And then marginal product, you can easily calculate. 103 is the uh, marginal product for unit 1 because 0. 103 minus 0, it is 103. Then 174 minus 103, it gives you 71. 223 minus 174, 49. So likewise, you can uh, increase from 3 to 4. How much is the change? You can see it and then write it, it here. 257 minus 223. Hope you understand how to calculate the marginal product. And then average product is column number two divided by column number one. Output divided by input gives you average product. 103 divided by one, 103. 174 divided by 287. Now, elasticity of production is also there. It is also a kind of productivity measures. The EP refers to the percentage change in output as compared to the percentage change in input. If you make 1% change in input, how much is the percentage change in output? That is known as elasticity of production. A production with an elasticity of one, exactly one, suppose EP is one, throughout indicates the constant returns. That means 1% increase in input is always accompanied by 1% increase in output. If you make 1% increase in input, there is 1% increase in the output. Then EP will be 1. A production function with an elasticity of EP is more than 1. Your elasticity of production is more than 1 indicates increasing return. That means 1% increase in input is always accompanied by more than 1% increase in output. Then this EP, when EP is more than 1, if it is less than 1, it indicates decreasing return. That means 1% increase in input is always accompanied by less than 1% increase in output. So there are three different values of EP, more than 1, 1, and less than 1. Now, partial factor productivity in, in production process, you have seen there are variety of variables. Variety of variables, and some are fixed variable, and some are uh, note the fixed variable, they, they are changing. So partial factor productivity is with respect to individual variable. You can calculate separately. Suppose in production operation, you have fertilizer, you have irrigation, you have seed, variety of inputs, tillage is there, and so many inputs are there. You take at one particular point of time, you cannot calculate uh, productivity of all the inputs together because their units are different. Their units are different and their rates are also different. So you cannot take all together. So we can do it one by one. Suppose you can calculate factor productivity of fertilizer, irrigation, herbicide, chemicals, or so on. In this case, suppose you are calculating for fertilizer. Fertilizer, so you can do it for fertilizer. You have variety of fertilizer. At one particular time, you can calculate for one fertilizer, say nitrogen sometimes for phosphorus, sometimes for potassium and so on. So that is a, a kind of partial factor productivity where you are taking very small fraction of a variable input. So productivity measures that uses one or more inputs factors, but not all factors are called partial factor productivity. For example, labor productivity at completely uh, company level, partial factor productivity measures are worker hours, materials, or energy per unit of production. Means for every input, you are calculating the productivity separately. Therefore, it is called as partial factor productivity. The average productivity of a single factor measured by grain output divided by the quantity of the factor applied. 
partial factor productivity can be measured for any factor of production fertilizer labor water pesticide machinery uh, with the units of measurement depending on the factor that is the main problem that the units of measurement are different therefore you cannot combine all the factors so here you can see partial factor productivity and agronomic efficiency of the applied nitrogen so in in first column you have 0 to 200 levels then the grain yield obtained at 50 kg nitrogen is 4400 at 100 4700 and so on so partial factor uh, factor productivity is kilograms of grain per kg of nitrogen this is your partial factor productivity so here 3000 cannot be divided by zero because there is no nitrogen application and you will not get any value but you can start with 50 4400 divided by 50 4700 divided by 100 you get different values of partial factor productivity agronomic efficiency you can calculate by uh, subtracting the control output 4400 minus 3000 and divided by the rate of fertilizer, that is 50 kg. So you will get to 28 kg grain increase. This is 20 kg grain increase per kg nitrogen because you have deducted the value of control yield. Similarly, you can see that these partial factor productivity and agronomic efficiency, they are declining. They are declining with the increase in input, level of input. You, you can plot it. On the y-axis, or y-axis, you have the output, the yield. On x-axis, you have fertilizer rate. So this is relation between grain yield and nitrogen. It can be depicted by a picture. Then you can see partial factor productivity. The data you got here, 88, 47, 32, they can be plotted against 50, 100, 150, and 200. So you get graph like this. It means partial factor productivity is increasing as you are increasing the levels of input. Similarly, agronomic absence is also decreasing as you are increasing the level of input. Now, total factor productivity. It is not possible to know uh, fact, uh, uh, to combine all these factors because rate of fertilizer application, kg per hectare. If you apply water, it is depth of water, uh, hectare, centimeter, something like that. So their units are different. So what can be done? All these partial factor productivity can be converted into monetary term you can get the monetary value of the output total output is there you can multiply it by the rate of the that particular output and get the total revenue similarly for inputs also you can convert them in financial terms or in monetary term convert the value of all inputs into money term and then divide output by input it becomes your to total factor productivity when all outputs and inputs are included in the productivity measure, it is called total productivity, total output divided by total input. But that is only possible when you convert them in terms of money. So output and inputs are defined in the total productivity measure as their economic values. Partial factor, product, total factor product productivity is calculated as weighted average of the monetary value of various outputs divided by weighted average of the monetary value of all inputs, including labor, capital, fertilizer. Now, these are some exercises, dear students, you may like to do it. Uh, please do it. I will send you this PowerPoint presentation today or later, but you need to do yourself, do this practice. If you are given, you can uh, calculate the average product, divide the TP by input, you get average product, then try to calculate marginal product similarly one more exercise is there this is the answer i'm giving answer similarly next calculate the ap mp from the following you can calculate try to calculate if you come across difficulty these are exercises your homework answers are also given now next is calculate tp and mp so here you can calculate the tp uh, tp and ap sorry tp and ap total product and and this, uh, I, I, I think you can do it. This is simple exercises, exercise. So in the first column, you will write 24 and then go on adding and calculate the average product. So this is how you will find the answer and then find out the values of TP and MP here and answers are given. So please do some practice. Now things, 
things become complicated here. You may get in some examinations, such kind of uh, uh, fill in the blanks. So here you need to put your brains. So you can test your brain if you can solve it. If you cannot solve it, uh, ask me privately. I, I will I'll make you understand. Privately means you can send me by, uh, by email because many of you can do it. But some of those who cannot understand it can contact me personally also. Now, these are the answers. And this is the perhaps the last. And I ask you to do it. You must be having your pen and paper. And this is the last item. And I ask you to do it now. You can uh, have pen and pencil. Uh, I don't know whether you have pen, pencil, and paper also. <laughs> so yes, sir. you do it now. If you if you can do it, that means you can do every exercise. So anybody could do it. So this is really very simple. First, you need to calculate the total products. Last column. Last column, wherever you find, uh, because it, it is the multi multiplication of column 1 and 2. Unit, and suppose 1 and 8. So you will get 8 here. 2 and 10, 20. And then 4 and 9, 36. Then 6 and 7. So you will get many values in total product and also some are given in marginal product. So with the help of column three and four, you can fill it up each other and then this average product. So it's not rocket science. I think each one of you can do it. So only thing is that you never practiced it. Therefore you find it difficult. So these are the answers you can see uh, about the fill in the blank and I'll share this presentation. So,